Yeah, All right, bro. I think I'm ready. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. I can hear, I can hear a damn thing coming out your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that might you be a good say thing. That. You would. Oh, okay, that's good. You would say that. I ain't mad at you. I think the same way, too. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I missed this. We're back. <laughs> The first 40 sports show with the Goon Squad is Ice Water, Black Thor, and yours truly, Puma. We're going to give you some sports. We've been away for a couple of months. We're going to give you some sports, and then we're going to go to our NFL picks because the season starts this week, and uh, Pop is already giving me his picks, so we got the pick order <laughs> for the year. I put it up for Black so he can see it. Pop uh, picks away. <laughs> mathematic equations on the same sheet we're putting the pick Man. order. So how you doing, Black? Hey man, I'm doing well. You know, I I I gotta say, I kind of miss you two brothers over the summer, man. Not a lot, just a little bit. But I'm kind of <laughs> glad. I'm kind of glad you kind of laid things out, man. Because usually you play hide and seek when it comes down to making the picks, man. But this year I gotta give you credit, bro. You kind of laid things out properly, and you know, there just should be less questions, you know, less investigations. So we're good. We're ready to get started, bro. Ready to get started. Like I said earlier, man, take pop picks. Throw them away. <laughs> Ball them up. Throw them away. Get a can of pop picks. Just put it right in there. <laughs> Hopefully we won't, we won't have any grievances this year. How you doing, Ice Water? I'm good, man. I mean, I miss you, brother. You know, it's all love here. We went through the struggles of the Wilberforce uh, situation together. Your cousin, I don't know, bro. That dude named Mark, a.k.a. Black Thor, you leave a little bit to be desired, but he all right, too. I, I ain't mad at him. I learned, you know, do, do my Tai Chi. And do and winning a championship now with the picks, I learned how to kind of deal with him a little bit better. So I'm in a better place right now. So because I am defending champion with Pop right now, so, you know, we got nothing to be upset about. He can say what he wants to about the Cowboys or whatever. I told you before, it's not gonna phase me. I'm on. I'm on to brighter and a better, brighter things. Of course, because I'm not ready to, to listen again to the rest of his banter. Moving on. Thank you, Musa. And away we go. Let's start off real quick with our quick hitters with college football. Started last week. Matter of fact, it started two weeks ago. There were some big time games. Of course, Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, Oklahoma, Clemson, Notre Dame with the thriller against Florida State. Uh, let's go to ice water first. What, are your, what is your eye test on the um, college football season thus far, sir? I know I, right now it's very exciting. Um, I haven't watched football like this, man, in probably five, six years. I literally sat down and watched some games, kind of flipped the channels, and I was really excited by the contest, the way they were getting it in, a lot of competitive games, um, starting off with the Ohio State-Minnesota uh, game. I tell you what, Minnesota is the real deal, man. <laughs> Minnesota played hard, came at Ohio State. A lot of people were pointing the finger, looking at what Ohio State was going to do. Had a very young quarterback. I know Minnesota, I think their uh, star running back that did well is probably going to be out for the rest of the season. But they played Ohio State tough early on. Ohio State kind of moved around and uh, made some things around second half and started spreading the ball, using their weapons. And then it just became uh, a type of situation where Minnesota was trailing. Um, definitely impressed by Georgia. I mean, man, who wasn't? Georgia, the way they held Clemson seven sacks, very impressive from that standpoint. And um, Penn State, Wisconsin was a really good game. Two teams in the trenches going after one another and uh, making it happen. And I get off of this because I know there's so many other things we can talk about. The other game I really was impressed by was the effort of uh, Iowa. Iowa was uh, really shutting down Indiana. Mm -hmm. You know, Indiana coming back with their uh, um, quarterback, you know, and, and him coming back off the, the resurgence of an injury. But uh, Iowa had everything going for themselves and really looked good, literally holding them down. Was it Michael? Was it, was it Pennick Jr., the quarterback for Indiana? They kind of put the clamps on there. So I think it's wide open. I'm excited. Uh, I know you're going to talk about uh, your boys at UNC. You know, take I'm not you know, all that. I'm not going to talk about UNC. <laughs> Every time they get ranked high. Mm. Yeah. yeah, but what? But I think what we're showing is a lot of things, and we're gonna talk about Alabama. You guys gonna talk about Alabama, but overall, this first or second week just kind of showed you that uh, I think it's a lot of heat going on. You're gonna, it's gonna be a lot of teams that are gonna be vying for trying to get that top four spots, and I think it could be very competitive 
if it continues to play out the way that it did the first week. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, some of the other teams. But, Black, I texted you both uh, last Saturday saying, watch Dabo change his tune on the 12 teams getting in the playoffs after that, that beatdown by uh, Georgia. It wasn't a beatdown as far as points, but that defense that Georgia has, they're no joke. Yeah, you're probably you're right about that, man. I know you text me also about LSU, man. They won their championship already, bro. We you can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's no need to keep bringing them. You shouldn't have called them the, the, the uniform sissy uniform. <laughs> <Just that personal. laughs> I, I'm gonna tip my hat to watching Ohio State Minnesota because uh, Ice is right. Minnesota has basically, as a university, as a team, they have grown. But when you watch Ohio State in that second half, man, the way they come out and they make adjustments, you're like, damn, is this a pro team? They came out in that second half and they did some things totally different. And it's like they basically changed jerseys and changed players. And I was I was impressed with that. I watched the Georgia Clemson game. I was impressed with Georgia. Clemson wasn't that bad. As you said, they didn't run the score too, too much, but I don't think they're gonna be. One thing I, I kind of thought was interesting, I didn't get a chance to see Oklahoma play this week, but I looked at Notre Dame being number nine. I said, okay, you know, they always do have Notre Dame. They find a way to keep them in the top 10 so they can slide down when other people lose. But if you got to go to overtime to beat Florida State. Are you really number nine? I mean, let's, let's be honest, man. Yeah, if you, are you really number nine? So to me, some of these rankings are basically, you know, it's going to take a few weeks and we're going to kind of settle down. But for the first week of football, for the most part, you have some good teams playing each other. And that's the thing I like to see more in college football. More good games where every week, I don't want to see Michigan play Western Michigan. I don't want to see it. I mean, we know hardball ain't that good. That Michigan play somebody that they can, can basically punch them in the mouth and they got to punch back. Outside of that, the first week wasn't too bad. And I have to admit, man, this this college football season kind of sneaked up on me. I mean, paying attention to the pros a little bit. I totally forgot about college football, man, but I'm happy that it's back, get rolling. And the, most of these stadiums are packed, man. People, you know, I don't know if they're wearing their mask or not, but I think, um, what was it, Michigan or Texas had like 88,000 people? A lot of heads, bro. Yeah, and not only did Notre Dame just squeak by Florida State, they're ranked number ten. Now they're ranked number eight. So I, I, I don't get it. So <laughs> they moved up in the ranking two spots. Uh, two spots. So I, I don't, I don't get it. But a, a good one this week should be Iowa State and Iowa. That's the game I want to see. And then Ohio State plays Oregon. Uh, Oregon's right. ranked number twelve. Um, that should be a good game too. Uh, so. Um, I'm, I'm looking at the schedule for next week, and uh, I see some good games that I want to check out. USC and Stanford, uh, Texas and Arkansas, UCLA with a big win last week. Um, also, uh, I want to see how well Virginia Tech plays after they beat North Carolina. And um, a lot of the teams that played last week that were playing really good, that they played really good this week. They're playing kind of cupcakes this week. But the game that I'm really right. interested in, because I'm the West Coast correspondent, as these guys are uh, <laughs> late and Saturday nights watching football, is Utah and BYU. And right. I said, you know, you uh, text me about BYU. Like, BYU is kind of good. And I'm like, yeah, they're, they're pretty good. And that quarterback they have is really good. Yeah. It, it's almost like they haven't lost a step losing the quarterback from last year who's with the Jets now. Yeah, no doubt. And of course, what surprised me was that uh, the BYU quarterback was African American. I was yeah. like, "Are you white man? The hell!" <laughs> I had to adjust my TV, just my to get my reading glasses, make sure I was okay, because that's one of the things you just don't see that often in, in uh, Provo, Utah. But uh, with that being said, they showed a, they showed a lot uh, a fight, uh, even from the standpoint of their opponent. Like I said, you yeah, you can see a lot of teams out here just scrapping. And if you don't play well, there's a chance you can lose. If, it, if it, That's the way it showed me the first first week anyway. Black, any more about college football? No, I mean, it's excitement for the first week. Things are ready to take off. Um, it's obvious that the fans are back into it. They're out there, they're yelling, they're rooting. And uh, it should be a good season. It should be a real good season. It's, um, I'm just hoping at some point, man, we, know, we all know who the big dragon is. It's Alabama. Yeah. And at some point, somebody's got to punch them in the mouth, man. I don't know who it's going to be, but at some point, someone's got to punch them in the mouth because until that happens, hopefully Georgia, it's just basically Alabama. Yeah. I, I was hoping that Miami could kind of sneak them, but after the first quarter, I'm like, there's no way they're going to be mm -hmm. Alabama. Let's go on. We've been away for a couple of uh, months, so I wanted to throw out to the guys, what are the stories that really kind of uh, really stood out while we were away? Black? 
I have to go to a story that's kind of off the field, but you know, we, you you and I was kind of chatting about this a little bit earlier. I'm starting to wonder, bro, are we going to ever see Deshaun Watson play quarterback again in the NFL, man? Yeah. Because his case has taken his, his case has taken a serious turn to where the FBI is starting to invest, have been investigating him. And I can't imagine that um, his his talents, even if he basically come out unscathed, which I, at this point to me, FBI don't start looking at you like they know something is there. They don't waste their, they don't waste their time, their money, and their resources unless they are looking at for something that they know is basically there. So with that being said, I'm thinking that most NFL owners, regardless of his talent, is not going to touch him, bro. They're not, they're not going to want that smoke. Um, outside of that, one good thing that happened, and I think we should keep an eye on this, man, the uh, Tebow thing <laughs> was a bust. And I think <laughs> Urban Meyer has to be real careful because I think he, he basically, to his players, not only to the league and other coaches, your, your credibility, you know, they might be paying you a lot, but when these guys don't really want to work hard for you and don't play hard for you, you're not going to win a lot of games. And if you win a lot of games, guess what? You're not going to be around for a long period of time. So I, I said this back then. I think he did himself and that franchise a disservice bringing Tebow in, trying to prove a point. And um, that's something worth keeping an eye on because I just don't think the other players there are going to basically rally around him. And if they, and they get up to a bad start, which they're a young team, how long is it going to be before they kind of give up on him in the season? Yeah. yeah. Ice, what are a couple of stories that stood out for you, man? I think one of the things that I'm really seeing constantly now is uh, the issues with some of the Olympians, but also some of the athletes and this mental health issue. I think it's major. I think some people are poo-pooing it uh, from the standpoint of uh, they're saying that the athletes need to get tough and deal with it. But when you're starting to see athletes complain about receiving threats and we know how this generation and has been it's a little different than the way that we grew up i think that we need to start looking at it uh, uh and taking this serious because you know there's times when people say certain things we go back to the point of what could imagine the mental issues that Jan jackie robinson was dealing with when he broke the barrier right yeah. but uh, this is simply just not the way that this generation is handling things and instead of just poop on it if they need help then we need to give it to them and, and I know they make a lot of money and everybody says some things to that nature, but I'd rather see somebody saying they need help and them getting help than instead of reading about them on the news because they decided to take their life. That's one thing that really bothers me. And we just take it for granted. Well, you're making money. You ought to be tough. Okay, that's great. But when they when you read about them in the papers or, or in, online, it just changes the whole the perspective of things. The other thing would be is, so many questions in the NFL. You guys mentioned about Deshaun Watson, where he, what might happen to me, whether or not he's going to play again. But uh, teams have been taking risks. You look at the Philadelphia uh, Eagles that have made changes and really know, is that the quarterback they want? But then they go back out and trade for another quarterback. You know, is Joe Burrow really ready in Cincinnati? Uh, of course, Cam Newton getting uh, popped out and released uh, in New England. And now they got their, the so-called next Tom Brady, their next savior. So it's a lot of different questions, man. And uh, can Buffalo really rise up to their uh, expectations? So a lot of questions. How the Cowboys going to make a move, do some things? Uh, who's going to win the East for that matter, NFL East? There's a lot of questions in the NFL that uh, a lot of risks were taken, a lot of things were done. Uh, when are the Chicago Bears going to feed uh, 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 Mr. Fields to the Lions? Right. anybody in the Lions then? <laughs> right, right, right. But with all those things being said, there's going to be some quite a lot of questions to be answered, and a lot of people are going to be on the point as far as the general managers that they're going to have to answer some questions, and they might be on the edge of being let go. So I'm excited to see how this develops. Is Ben Roethlisberger really going to be able to come back and deliver the Steelers uh, back to where everybody thinks they should be, or is it time for a new big dog in, 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 in the city? Of the NFL in that division, talk about them Browns. Anyway, well, I, but that that is so many questions that I'm intrigued, and only the results will show us. So I'm definitely intrigued by the NFL court. What's going on there? All right, I'm gonna hit you guys with some quick hitters. Black, do you want to say something before we go to the quick hitters? Real quick, I wanted to just jump on the mental health thing, and I believe in people getting their help that they deserve, that they need, and stuff of that nature. But what I'm noticing a little bit, and I saw this with Kevin Love. You know, when Kevin Love was out there in Minnesota scoring whatever his points, doing his thing, he had no mental health issues. When Kevin Love got to Cleveland and couldn't live up to being Kevin Love, 
I have mental issues, I have mental health issues. So my point is that sometimes if you have that, you got to maybe step away and get that taken care of. We've seen that off the tennis player. It seems like sometimes when they're, when they're, when they're not playing to their level, they want to put that on the forefront. And I understand the mental health is a serious thing, but if, if, if you're saying that, pull yourself away, go deal with it. Don't use that as a reason when things aren't going well and then pull back because, and I'm not saying people are right, but I think that's where the frustration comes in where people are paying attention. It's like when you're not performing well, okay, I don't, I don't feel like, I don't, okay. And sometimes saying less is better. Just go handle your business. Go ahead. Your, we don't need to know, you know, what you're feeling, your anxiety. People pay you to basically do a sport. If you have those problems, go tend to it. Go do it. Go. It's okay. Nothing's wrong with it. But don't sit around after when a performance or something that does not live up to your caliber and you want to lay that out there. That's all I'm saying. All right. All right. We're going to hit some quick hitters. I'm going to go back and forth with these guys with some of the other stories that, that happened. Congratulations to the Milwaukee Bucks. We were off the air when the Milwaukee Bucks won and the Greek Freak. But well, we're going to bounce these stories around. Uh, I'll go to you first, Ice. Mac Jones teaching Cam Newton the Patriots playbook. <laughs> you know, I mean, and I'm not sure. That might be true. But how the hell is my just explanation? Some people, the media is amazing, bro. They, they, they can paint a picture. It might be true. I don't know. But you mean to tell me Cam Newton was, was, it, was he MVP at one point? Yep. Of this league? So all of a sudden, when you want somebody to do well, you want to put them in a great light, now you're saying this young guy just coming out of college is teaching a, teaching a former MVP of the National Football League how to read the playbook of the New England Patriots. Now that might be true, but I'm questioning to myself. I ask that question: How in the hell was he to be the MVP of the league? <laughs> you just don't do that. If you can't read a playbook, I'll, you can run and you can dance and you can be Jefferson Street Joe Gillen re reincarnate, reincarnated all you want to. But you have to have some type of skill set and be able to understand what's going on in the league. But for them to draw that out like that amazes me, and I'm like, will you go to no end to try to prove? Or you want to put this guy in such a positive light that you want him to be the next Tom Brady. Now remember, I get off this very quickly. Understand this. Love him or hate him. Tom Brady earned that stuff, bro. He earned it. Love him or hate him. He did earn it. He had some great people around him, but he delivered. Before you make him next Tom Brady, by the way, Tom Brady won in the sixth round, y'all, if y'all remember that. Let this man show us what he can do instead of calling him the next great one, even if they decided to make him the starter. Fine with that. Let him prove himself first. Black, you've been predicting this for years. Go ahead, bro. Just go ahead. I heard someone say the other day, I was watching a show, and they said, as an NFL player, you must memorize in your head 80 to 100 plays. Memorize. Just when they say it, you, there's certain things you got to look for. You got to read this. You got to go whatever. And I think the problem with Cam, I said this a while ago, Cam see himself as a LeBron of the NFL, and he doesn't put he hasn't put the time in. And I don't think I'm not saying he can't read plays. He could read the playbook, but Cam think I just show up, and it's, I'm just going to happen. You if you look at the Patriots, they signed him by default a couple of years ago. No one else wanted Cam. Thirty one other teams did not want Cam. But what was Cam out there doing? Showing his abs, lifting weights, bro. They ain't got a damn thing to do with reading a playbook doing something on the field. So my point is, I think Cam is all about flash, bro. And when you say he won MVP, they tailored his, they tailored that season for Cam to run, dazzle, gap, and do all the other stuff, bro. And right after that, have you seen Cam has been like this in a slide? Let's not forget, there was a receiver, if I'm not mistaken, Benjamin, that called Cam out years ago. And Cam wanted to almost fight him and said basically what we're hearing now. So it's not something made up. This has kind of been this. So my point is, if Cam knew he had a deficit in reading plays, bro, you've had time, downtime, whatever, to learn, get better. So, yes, if you're allowing a rookie to come in, and basically, I'm not saying a lot, but if you got a rookie coaching you up, there's no way in the world an ownership and a team is going to look at a rookie giving you instructions that you should know at this point in your career and keep you on the game, keep you on the field, bro. It, it, this doesn't, mm -hmm. it doesn't make business sense. So he has to understand and then run his mouth. 
It'd be a different story if you are a starter of your skills. Your skills is not starter anymore in the NFL, bro. Have you seen the quarterback with the Jets? Have you seen the quarterback that they're trying to keep off the field in Chicago? Have you seen these young cats coming in? What can you do with them? What, what can you do? And this, that's the point. No one's going to pay you to run 80 yards anymore. You can't even do that anymore, bro. You can't run over people. And I'm going to get away with this. Cam has not been the same since that linebacker in that Super Bowl lit his ass up. He has not been the same. I don't care what anybody says. But his mentality. I remember when Carolina was, when he was hurt a couple of years ago, Carolina, he wouldn't even come stay on the sideline. He wouldn't do nothing. You know what he did? He made a video drinking, drinking once in him. I might be back. Bro, really? Really? That's yeah, his mentality, bro. That's his mentality. Yeah, that, that's yeah. what goes to Denver Broncos. There, you know, Benjamin called him out saying he couldn't read the defenses. He couldn't pick up the blitzes. And that's that cost him the game. Next story, real quick. Go to you, Black. Ben Simmons wanting out of Philly. Ben Simmons should be happy anybody takes him at this point. The mere fact that he's not out of Philly says a lot, bro. No one wants Ben Simmons. How are you going to demand you want out of – wait a minute. What you should want is a jump shot. What you should want is to make free throws. What you should want is a heart. What you should want is self-confidence. That's what you should want. You should. I would keep my mouth shut. As long as they pay me, I wouldn't say a word, bro, because you don't deserve to wear an NBA uniform as far as I'm concerned. You came with this league thinking you was much better than what you were. You played a half a college season. And some idiots on ESPN and other places made you much bigger than what you are. And you have been a disappointment. Absolutely a disappointment. I don't know how you ever made an all-star team. At some point, people got to start looking at you being 6'8 flop, 6'6 six, six, six flop. Because that's what you are. And everyone knows it. So for you to man and act like you own the right to walk out of Philadelphia, bro, you, you better hope they don't find a way to just kind of rip your contract if you don't get paid again. And then you go on your off-season with tours, wherever you want to go, play where you want to play, play with your girlfriends. But at some point, man, you got to get a game, bro. But you don't have one. I, 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 I out of Philly. Yeah, well, I'm surprised by the fact that, that he wants, you know, he's trying to demand his way out because he deserves to, to, he needs to provide better performances for that team that really was all in. I mean, they could have split between he and uh, MB a long time ago, and they tried to keep them together because they thought there was something there. And now it's just getting to a point where um, I don't know if he just, it, whatever it is, he just lost his way. He hasn't developed a game. He hasn't shown you what we're looking for. Definitely has not lived up through expectations. And I give you that. But my problem, too, with Philadelphia is I don't think they made any some smart decisions. I think they should have got rid of one of them. When they could have before, when the, yeah. the market was a lot better. The other better. part, too, is when you had somebody else, you know, remember, and I know y'all get tired of me breaking this, this uh, coming up with this broken record, is you remember when uh, they had Jimmy Butler, right? And Jimmy Butler tried to show on the way, and they act like little girls and little kids, being like they were, weren't getting enough shots and whatnot. I said, okay. And then everybody, at that point, Jimmy Butler was the bad guy, right? Then Jimmy Butler goes to Miami and plays in the final. So, you can just tell there were some things there. The other thing I would say, too, when I look at this standpoint, and for as much as I want to put this on, uh, on Simmons uh, for not developing this game, I've always said this. I said this from the beginning, and, and I agree with Black Thor from the standpoint of them buying into the hype, guy playing only maybe a half a season of college basketball. You got to understand where people are best suited, right? And I think Philadelphia dropped the ball early. He's 6'10", 6'11". He doesn't have a jumper. He can dribble the ball. He can pass the ball a little bit, moving around. Then you want to make him a point guard? He's no. not a point guard. No. He's no. never been a point guard. He's a damn three three at best. He's a three. He's, he's in the three position. Small forward, big tall forward, but small forward, power forward. He's a small forward that at times in the when he gets the ball on the break can throw a nice dime, but he should not be leading your team at the point guard. They became enamored with him because everybody was seeing how skillful he was from such a size, and it has taken a toll on their team. You go, you start a fast break in the lane, you have him on the wing, there's not too many people that can stop him. The dude is athletic as hell, but he should not be leading your team at point guard. But guess what now? You're paying for it. You might say that's an excuse. Say what you want to. But if you know basketball, understand skill sets, that's what you should be doing. That's your job as general managers in the front office to be making sure people in a place where they can, you know, where they can excel. They haven't done that. 
They have not done that. Now you got a mess. So where whoever you blame, I don't give a damn. But it's clearly Philadelphia has something to do with it as well. Not just Simmons, because of course a player gonna let you whatever you let him do. He gonna take your money. If you're gonna let him just not develop, that's what he's gonna do. Now all of a sudden you're worried about him developing. That should happen a long time ago. I've been arguing for the last few years. He needed to be a power forward. His game is power forward around the basket, not point guard, not point guard. Uh, this is something we've been suspecting for the longest here. Uh, Paul Pierce really kind of says, hey, ESPN wasn't a real good fit for me. And they always want you to talk about LeBron, Ice. <laughs> really? <laughs> Didn't see that. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I, what I'm going to say is, I, I, the only thing I'll say here is, when you look from that standpoint, it's not a surprise. And Paul Pierce, when when he kind of put himself in a bad position and kind of got yanked for showing himself when he was making it rain and all that other stuff, he's trying to figure out a way where he could come back to a point, right? And listen, and not seem like a clown, which kind of put himself in that position. And then when the all of the stuff started to unravel with Maria Taylor and all of the the jump and, and, and Rachel Nichols and it became. The we still in uh, black we love Black Lives Matter and all that stuff now we still on that on that that crusade right so it was a perfect time when Maria Taylor leaves to go see that now I can say something about ESPN because now they are easy pickings and people will listen to me now so now he can come back out and you go well yeah they do talk about LeBron a lot they do he can get his get his, his shout out because of what ESPN is trying to do now. You know, and they made the changes with Stephen A. Smith. So right now they're kind of vulnerable. So somebody that's been hurting and trying to get back in the game a little bit, Paul Pierce is perfect for it. But again, for you to say, well, they do all they talk about is LeBron. Nobody else has said it like that. We have. We <laughs> said over here, but nobody listen. But listen to us like that. But all of a sudden, Paul Pierce he probably listened to the show. He Paul Pierce <laughs> heard what we said probably, and he brought it to the forefront. But with him saying it now, people are like. When they do talk about it, they do talk about LeBron. But now it's it has substance, and that's his way back in. I'm not sure how far he's going to go with it, but that's his way back in. Nobody dogging now, but Paul, PP, just FYI, bro. I'm not no, I'm not an expert. I'm not a counselor or anything like that. But you might want to keep that uh, stuff at home, at home, and or at the barbershop, bro. After hours, you know, when they pan out, when they put out the the Christmas calendar, if you know which ones I'm talking about. That's when you might want to share that information, not normally to the regular public. <laughs> and send us an invite. Black, I'm going to get on ESPN, maybe in another show about that Black Rifle coffee commercial they're putting on and the significance behind that. But we've been saying this for a long time. ESPN is LeBron's station. Yeah, without a doubt, man. They basically rose, uh, uh, rode him to prominence for the most part. I'm not saying they were in good pride LeBron game here, but they got in his bandwagon because realistically, I think what ESPN thought early on, Michael Jordan, as good as Michael Jordan was, Michael Jordan was a surprise to the media. No one saw Michael Jordan come from North Carolina and being Michael what Michael was and what Michael grew to be. So they wasn't on the forefront. So they they attached themselves later on and they, they rode it for as much as they can. They squeezed the orange, get a lot of juice out of it. So when LeBron came, like, we're not missing this train. We're I not swear. missing it. High school. Not, high school. We're not missing this. So they made sure they just, I remember when Colin was there, I thought Colin was drinking his sperm. I am not, I'm not lying to you. I thought he was drinking his sperm. Every day it was well, LeBron, this, this is LeBron. What will LeBron do? And I'm like, you got to be kidding me, man. But if you look at where they have gone, because LeBron, they have realistically, people have fed off LeBron, man. It's like, LeBron is like a big, I'm going to say like a big, big alligator that everybody has eaten off of. You may not have Skip Bayless if it wasn't for LeBron. You may not have some of these shows up. Well, listen, this is no knock on LeBron. It's that his greatness, what he has done, how he has carried the NBA, allow these cats that are basically ordinary as commentators to excel and to get to places where they're making millions. And I said to you a little while off air, Shannon, Right now, Skip, that's what they talk about every day. They Even in the offseason, LeBron, LeBron, you got to be kidding. I mean, it has made, in my opinion, it's made them lazy as producers, as commentators, because even when football is not going on, 
us three, we find other things to talk about. We find things that's going on in this country in the sports sense. We talk about they are lazy. Long as they can bring LeBron up, because LeBron has a lot of social media followers. So they believe long as they're on LeBron, his QR is high, whatever, it makes it easy for them. It is a damn shame. That's where his media has went to and journalism has went to. Because in a sense, they become lazy. Just talk about LeBron. Nobody wants about LeBron every day. And you wonder when ESPN ratings start going down, that's what it is. I remember it came out a little while ago. LeBron, even though he has followers, the most leaked life athlete. And it's not to his liking. It's not because of him. It's because his, he's, he's on every day, 24 hours a day. What is LeBron going to do? Who's going to play with LeBron? You get tired of it. And it's amazing. And the NFL did that not to this full extent with Tom Brady, in a sense. They kind of put Tom Brady and Peyton Manning and Tom Brady in the league. You have other great players. You have to spread out some of the attention. So what he's saying, I admire him coming out saying it now, but I don't think it'll help Paul Pierce get back in, into prominence and get back in the gig because exactly. I think, for one, Paul Pierce is not cut for television. Just like Dan Marino. Remember they got rid of him a long time ago? Joe Montana. Some of these cats that might have been good at what they do, they're not good in the booth, they're not good on television. And a lot of times they get carried based on their name. So I don't I don't see what network, if anybody was going to pick up Paul Pierce, he got picked up already. So... He can talk now. He's saying something, brother, we knew 15 years ago. It's not like you're breaking, the, you're breaking the code and coming out saying something that's like, damn, let's sit back and pay attention. No, let's hire Paul Pierce. You're going to drop some more. Not, no, bro. You're, so, you're only saying this because you're trying to get back in. When you were there, you had no problem drinking that sperm as well. So, so I, I don't understand it. I know it sounds strong. Well, that's that's strong. Yeah, that's real strong. If I if I if if I if I were wearing drawers, I would have got up and walked off the camera. But my mom and daddy raised me right. Anyway, this story um, is um, <laughs> <laughs> this story. I told you that Ooh. the Raiders made a big mistake with John Gruden. Do do you know? I don't know if it was a national outlet, but the Bears were trying their best to kind of trade some players and the Raiders. We're trying to get Khalil Mack after they traded him when John Gruden got got there. Black? I mean, it doesn't surprise me because John John Gruden is a dumb dumb. I'll be honest with you, bro. He won a Super Bowl. I, I don't even count a Super Bowl, be honest with you. When they go to the Super Bowl, that was Tony Dungy's Super Bowl. He came in basically with a team that Tony Dungy won with every year, but Tony Dungy, for whatever reason at that time, offensively, could not find a way to get Tampa over the hump. He was a great defensive mind. Offensively, he didn't bring in the help that he needed. Therefore, when he got to Indianapolis, when he got with Peyton Manning, they kept him away from the offense. You just you just stay here, coach, be a defensive mind, and then they handle it, and therefore, Tony has a ring on his finger. Good coach, though. But you look at a guy that won a Super Bowl, basically kind of check, cheat his way to get there. He knew the Raiders play calls. They knew their calls. Yeah. That's, that's not winning the Super Bowl, bro. I'm being honest with you. It's not. So he has basically conned his way to everything he's done as far as his career, as far as I'm concerned. And for some reason, Al Davis' son has a hard on for him. And I don't care what he does with that team, he's not getting, he's not letting Tony, what's his name, walk away. He's paying him, he's paying him $10 million for 10 years because he wants to think he's doing the right thing. So I don't, it's, it's amazing. It's a dumb, dumb move. It shows you made a huge mistake letting that cat go. You made a huge mistake letting that receiver go. But John Gruden has, has no clue what he's doing. He basically taught, he talks the talk, and he can't walk the talk. And everyone knows it. Everyone knows it. Anyone that knows anything about NFL football knows John Gruden has no idea. And this is the same cat. We're talking about ESPN. This is the same cat that had Monday night talking, making no sense. Remember that for years? <laughs> he was a Monday night making what? No sense. Yeah. None. Yeah. Trying to be the next John Madden. That's what he's trying to be, bro. He, he wasn't a good commentator. So yeah. his whole career to me has been a sham. So when you, when you say that story broke, came up, would I be surprised? Hell no. But I'd be surprised you parked up Mac House trying to beg him to come back. I would not be surprised because he's an idiot, man. An idiot. And that's just putting lightly. Nice. They were trying their best to get Khalil Mack back in a Raiders uniform. Yeah, well, first of all, you you knew you when you knew you messed up in the first place, there's no way in hell they're gonna give it back. One thing we'll say about Chicago, that will be the ultimate dumb dumb who. Yeah. They are at least smart enough to realize no take backs, you know, as a kid. Nope. I want my I want my stuff back. No take back. No take back. <laughs> so, with that being said, they knew. Nope, nope. We 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 you know we we smuggled him out, got him for a little bit of nothing, and we're keeping him, no matter how bad we are right now. But 
when you say about Gruden, the one thing about Gruden when he was a, a commentator and whatnot, uh, the one thing about him and even with the quarterbacks that he brought in with all of the special and telling you how great this guy was before the draft, he didn't hurt anybody. Right? As wrong as he may have been, he didn't hurt any teams. Now you you knew he had been out of football for a long time and they was had to have him, went out and spent, him, spent money, so much money to bring him out of retirement. You might want to say to yourself, might be a reason why he was out of the game for so long, right? He became a so-called expert on the draft and breaking this down. These guys kind of like Madden was. You know, Madden was a lot better, I think, coach. But Madden, when he got his got this uh, thing together, Madden had his games and whatnot. Madden didn't think twice about trying to come back to the league. Madden had his niche and he was cool with it, right? But uh, with that being said, I thought the same thing was, was going on with Gruden. And Gruden ended up uh, getting another opportunity. I don't know what they were thinking. It hasn't turned around. It's not magical. You've had opportunities to make some great trades and bring some players in, but it's like a revol you know revolving uh, carousel. We keep going on and on, and they're not getting better. They're not getting better. And you've had some decent talent. So when when are you going to finally say stop? When you're going, but maybe ten years from now they'll say it. But right now I don't see it improving. Uh, Gruden has shown you who he is. He has great, um, great discussions after the game. Sounds good to tell you something to make you laugh, but would you really want to talk about turning that franchise around? I don't see it happening anytime soon. Even the fourth year of his his contract, exactly. I think after year five they should just cut ties because it's yeah. not getting any better. It's not getting any better. I'm going to tie this last story in with uh, the Major League Baseball report with Ice Water and uh, his report. Um, the Cubs had a fire sale, and they gave away all their good players to teams that um, are, are better than them. And um, it just seems like the folks here just don't really care. Um, give me your baseball report, sir. Yeah, well, you look from the baseball report, it's all over the place. We are, we're, we're, they, you said, they're back. They're making a move. We had to, uh, Great all you when you moved that to uh with moving with the all-star game. Um, I want to say one thing that I think baseball got right, and I don't know if you watched it or not, but uh having that game in Iowa at the Field of Dreams was was spectacular. And I say that from the standpoint of it was great TV. Uh you guys saw a lot of home runs hit in the cornfield. It took you back, right? And the two teams that they brought on there, the New York Yankees and also Chicago White Sox, they delivered. It's probably one of the, they could not have written a better script. You know, Yankees were losing, Yankees come back, take the game, take the lead, and then all of a sudden, here comes the Chicago White Sox, the underdog as we know them to the, everybody to the Yankees to hit a walk-off home run. I mean, it could not have been better television. So I was pumped up about that, but now we're starting to see that a lot of the teams are moving forward. Some of the regulars are still there. Uh, Chicago White Sox making some things happen. But when you look at the Dodgers and the Giants going really after it in the in the, in the National League West, things like that, and then Moon looking up where the, the Reds are still trying to make a move there. Uh, Tampa Bay still bound and bouncing around. Um, Boston, Yankees moving. There's a lot of still, we thought early on there might be chances for some of the other uh, dominant teams, not so much dominant teams, to make moves, but it almost right now seems like we might be getting some of the old regular players. And the Nationals are struggling a little bit, but uh, I would not be surprised if it was at the end of the day, Dodgers or somebody else making a run or the Yankees or somebody, or Boston. I almost like the same old song with the more dominant teams playing for World Series. Yeah, it seems like the Dodgers and San Francisco are just battling out and it's, it's gonna probably take a, a one game playoff at the end of the season to see um, who wins that division? Uh, Black Thor, you got six teams in the WNBA playoff. Who's going to be the next two? You know what? I got to say this, man. I'm going to have to kind of get back to you there because I'm not sure, bro. I'm not sure. When I said I didn't pay attention to sports, I didn't pay attention to WNBA. I thought there was still an Olympics. Forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm looking at it, man, it's like uh, Dallas is number seven, New York is number eight. In Washington, the Mystics and the uh, Los Angeles Sparks, they're tied with a 10 and 8, 18 record. And it seems like they're probably about uh, four, four teams that could get to that seven and eight spot. So, uh, yeah, they, they came back from the Olympics and the Connecticut <laughs> Sun has the best record in the league. And so I was surprised to, to hear that. The other surprise I had is how well when Candace Parker came back. 
how well Chicago has been playing to get that. They sealed the number six spot, which I didn't see that coming. Yeah, when she came back early on, she was playing quite well. Connecticut Sun has been bound all year. I would say, based on what you you know what you're just saying, I mean, I think New York has a shot. I wouldn't count the Mystic out. And I say that because uh, Della Don just came back. She was out for a while. She came back. I think you know with their unity, they kind of pulled together. I'm really surprised they find a way to kind of break through. Dallas, I'm not sure about, but I would kind of look at the Liberty and the Mystic as two teams that could probably move in and, and move into the playoff scenario. But Connecticut Suns can be tough to beat, bro. Them in Seattle, those two teams have been basically strong all year, kind of basically going back and forth, one and two. So I think it's, I don't see any team at this point, and I'm not trying to basically knock down the playoffs, but I don't see any team uprooting Connecticut or, or basically uh, Seattle. Okay. okay. Last second shot before we go to our NFL picks next. Black? It's, I came across this story the other day, man, and it kind of basically said a lot to me. Um, Deion Sanders is doing a lot. I mean, with, with his position, with, his, with, with where he's at the school for the HBO as a head football coach. And I'm not sure how he got this to happen, but Michael Strahan bought every member on that team a suit to wear to games and stuff of that nature. And you say to yourself, okay, why would he buy him a suit? Because basically, you got to have the mentality, bro. It's about business and you're going to work. So he's kind of changing, not kind of, in a sense, he's changing the culture and the mentality. Because a lot of times at these other schools, they care less about what these young men do. As long as when, when it's time to play and the lights get bright, they go out there and do what they have to do. But I'm happy to see that Dion is basically saying to these young men, if you don't go to the big dance, you'll make it to the pros, whatever. You still got to be a respective person and respected man in your community. And it starts here. If it didn't start before here, it's going to start here and you leave and you're going to be better than where you came in. That's my yeah. last second shot. Well, kudos. Kudos to Michael Strahan for even stepping in and doing that. Um, and Neon Dion Prime, Coach Prime is on social media all the uh, I'm wondering when he gets time to coach. <laughs> bringing in a lot of big names and bringing in a lot of people to motivate these young men. And um, hopefully he succeeds. I hope he succeeds and stay focused on coaching these men up. Not only be great football players, but men. Ice, last second shot. Yeah, one thing we never knew was going to be prevalent. We thought it would come up. We thought it would take a little time. But the NIL and college sports, buddy, it, for licensing for these players has blown up and taken off so much that the NCAA is like, they're just trying to, trying to stay in the game. I, I'm telling you, the number of deals that have been made by these athletes, I think about uh, the young freshmen, uh, yours that came in from Texas, came to Ohio State University, skipping his freshman year as a senior year in high school and has joined Ohio State a football team and has already been uh, promised or going to be signing a deal for a million dollars to be at Ohio State for his own licensing group. Other guys have have cars and things of that nature. Other uh, folks have signed with barbecue places. And I mean, anybody with some cash, they have it, man. And, and these athletes, to the form, have not wasted any time taking advantage of this stuff. And I think the NCAA is in trouble. I, I, before, I, I wouldn't say this, but until they pass this, this situation and this law and everybody pass it because they had to, I'm trying to tell you right now, be very careful. Now also with the, we're looking at possibly moving to the super conferences as well, NCAA, man, if y'all don't change your, your ways, your days may be numbered because these players are saying, I can make my own money. I'm not waiting on you. I'm going to college early. I'm doing whatever I got to do to get my money so I can drive my brand new Lexus. Dude, if you just turn around and look around the, around the country and see how many deals have been signed. It's a different world, brother, a different world. Yeah, um, I, I agree with that. Um, and uh, I even see some of the players on commercials now. So uh, they're making money on commercials. Um, my last second shot was what I mentioned earlier about ESPN. Maybe they're hard up for advertising dollars, but there's a company called the Black Rifle Coffee Company that was supposed to be linked to the Proud Boys. Now they're trying to link it to the liberals, but I thought they should have thought this out better because the knucklehead who was shooting people in Kenosha, Wisconsin, who is, uh, they're trying to get the trial together now, um, was wearing that shirt as a member of the Proud Boys. And I thought ESPN, 
they're always talking about being social conscious and all this other stuff and covering that should have thought this out a little bit more with not advertising this particular company. I don't even know if they sell coffee, to be honest with you, but the, the mere name of the Black Rifle Coffee Company with all the stuff that's happening with gun control and all that stuff, I think your marketing department should have thought that through a little bit more and just refused the dollars. Maybe you're hard up for money. I don't know. But I thought you should have thought that through because you snuck it in in the midday when you thought nobody was watching. And um, as um, my boy on MSNBC, uh, the Reverend says, we got you. All right. Stay tuned for our NFL picks. I know Black has been anxiously awaiting for this. So stay tuned. Welcome to the NFL Picks with the Goon Squad on the First 40 Sports Show. We're going to do it this week, our first week. And so the pick order is Black Thor because he came last place last week. <laughs> <laughs> Followed by me, I was in third. Ice Water and Pop. Pop is already giving me his, his picks. He was writing early, giving me his picks. So we're going to go down um, the uh, schedule, which is Tomorrow, Thursday, with the first game, the game opener. They usually have the Super Bowl winner playing in that game on Thursday night. Dallas travels down to Tampa Bay. Black, who you got? This is an easy one, man. I, I think that uh, Tampa Bay wants to make a statement. They want to kind of basically get things going for the year. I have to admit, I've seen Tom Brady kind of through in the, throughout the preseason. He looks pretty good. He has age. He looks good. The team, I think, too, is a little more, I don't want to use the word mature, but I think we're more seasoned this time around than they were Took them a while to kind of get clicking last year. I don't think it's going to take that long to get them clicking this start of the season. Tampa Bay will win this game convincingly. Okay. okay. I'm also going with Tampa Bay. Uh, I, I I saw that Dallas is, is missing their linebacker. And um, and Tom is going to have a field day out there. They're bringing 22, the, the 22 last year that played. They're bringing them back. There'll be a more cohesive unit. I don't know if Dallas will be uh, comfortable with playing with Dak coming back and whether or not he will be comfortable playing against that Tampa Bay defense going with Tampa Bay. Ice? Yeah, uh, losing one of your offensive linemen, at least for one game or maybe COVID or whatever is going on, it's going to be a difficult situation because uh, for Zeke, of course, running the ball, Ezekiel Elliott, but then also for Dak Prescott because he hasn't played in a while. And no matter what you say, how you think about it, when you haven't really had any live action, it can take a toll, and, and that's tough to do when you're playing against the defending champions and Tom Brady. So I'm going to choose uh, Tampa Bay. All right. The two Dallas Cowboy fans on the show are going with Tampa Bay. They ain't stupid. So it's Tampa Bay across the board. The next game on tap is Arizona versus Tennessee. Black, who you got? Tennessee made some very good, strong changes in the offseason. It's time to put it up and see what they got, man. I think it's going to take a while for Arizona to kind of get rolling. Um I've watched him in the preseason. This um, Their offensive line is, I want to say horrible, but it's not good. So that quarterback's going to be in the run a lot. Um, I don't think their running game is as strong to take the pressure of him. At some point, they're going to turn at least the running game of Tennessee on every, and on Cardinals. It's not going to be pretty. I'm taking the Titans. Yeah. I, I was looking at this game, and uh, Kyler Murray has some great weapons, but I think it's going to take a little time for them to gel. And uh, I had to go with Tennessee at home on this one. Ice, who you got? Yeah, when you look at it from that standpoint, as you mentioned about the weapons, you know, picking up an uh, older A.J. Green, you know, you got DeAndre Hopkins to have also a nice little younger wide receiver over there. Uh, but I think what happens is there's going to be time of possession. What Tennessee is going to do is they're going to play their, their hard school, old school uh, ball where they just kind of dink and dank and press and press and pound and pound. They get up 14 points. And they just shut everything down. 14, 17 points. You got Arizona trying to come back. And uh, Kyler Murray running for his life. So with that being said, I uh, got to go with Tennessee. Everybody is going with Tennessee on this one. Pop is going with the home team, Tennessee. The next game on tap is Jacksonville versus Houston. Black, who you got? Going with the rookie? This is almost a game we can kind of close your eyes and pick this one up. <laughs> I don't see Jacksonville going on the road and kind of securing this as a win. I think it's going to take them a while to find out who they are. I know the quarterback, you know, some say he kind of played pretty good in the preseason, but the real season starts come Thursday and come Sunday. I'm not saying Houston's a good team, but I think Houston at home, they're going to find a way to kind of run the ball some. They're not going to them basically rely on Tyrod Taylor. I think they're going to run and keep it close. They went about a field goal a little bit more, so I'm going to take the Texans in this one. 
All right, Black Jason. I'm going with Houston also, Tyrod Taylor. I had to go with the more experienced quarterback and the team. I think Lawrence is going to be good, um, but it's hard for a rookie to come in and win their first game. And I wasn't really impressed watching Jacksonville during the preseason uh, with their offense. So uh, it's going to take a while for them to gel. I'm going with Houston. Ice? Yeah, this is very difficult for me because I'm not just saying because of the Urban Meyer factor but and Lawrence, but I think that Jacksonville has some decent uh, talent at wide receiver. They might be able to build a run forward with uh, some things that are running back, some players that are running back. And then right, I wanted to flip to Houston, and I looked over there, and I'm kind of a little still nervous about their coach. Still got a few questions about the coach situation. You bring in Tyrod Taylor. But – as you mentioned, the experience, I think, alone is going to be enough for Houston to do it. Um, don't get in their own way. They just let somebody just play, simply play football. I think Tyrod Taylor has a lot to prove uh, after they took him out with the – tried to kill him with the injection, the wrong injection. <laughs> I think Tyrod is <laughs> new. The new him out. <laughs> he's going to try to leave – yeah, at least for one week, he's going to try to show you that he's worthy of, of being a start again. So I'm going to go with Houston. I wonder if he got vaxxed after that scenario with the Chargers. Uh, <laughs> uh, Pop is actually going with Jacksonville on this one. So he may know something we don't know. Or maybe his first law. I don't know. Well, we're, we will move on. We have the Los Angeles Chargers versus Washington. Black, who you got? This, um, this is an interesting game. It's not necessarily a pick them a real interesting game. I like the, I like the Chargers quarterback. I do. I, I didn't get a chance to watch too much of it in, in preseason. I think their defense is kind of it's kind of probably a, their defense is kind of decent. I like I like Washington defense, but I don't like the fact that they kind of brought in um, the quarterback they brought in. I just don't think that. Magic, you're in. You no, 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 bro. I, I just don't think so. I think you're you're misleading the team by doing that. Either you draft a quarterback, stick them out there, and go with this young defense. Or don't bring him in with all that, man. But with that being said, I'm going to take the Chargers. Because I think the Chargers have more of a solid footing. This quarterback, Herbert, can play, bro. I'm, I'm, I don't think he's going to be out. I'm hoping that he's not. But I'm going to take the Chargers. Even though they got to travel, you know, cross-country, come up here on the East Coast, I think they're going to basically sneak this one out. Okay. Um, Washington, their defense was, I think, top five last season. And I, I'm looking for the defense to really try to go after the, the, the uh, young quarterback. I like the quarterback, but but um, uh, I don't think he can withstand that that top five defense. And I got to go with Fitz Magic at least for two or three games. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go with him for at least two or three games. After that, then they'll snatch him. Somebody else will come in. That's it. So I'm gonna go with Washington in this game. Ice. Yeah, I usually don't agree with you, Puma, but uh, Fitz Magic is dynamite the first three games of the year. <laughs> then after that, it falls off. You're not going to roll. You're not going to the playoffs. You're not doing anything like that, too. Plus, too, with the standpoint of they have some decent receivers over there and watch two women clearing and they're picking up Curtis Samuels. Hopefully, they come off the COVID list. And uh, the defense is second to none. And I just uh, when you put, start chasing after the uh, uh, Herbert over, over in the uh, in L.A., start chasing him around a little bit, start getting a little tight, a little nervous. Now, he had his moments last year, but we know, put a little pressure on him, got tight, and I think he's going to get tight. And we know that Ron Rivera is a tar nosed tough co uh, coach, and I think they're going to get it done. You're trying to come all the way across the pond, across the water, should I say, to try to get a victory in Washington? Nah, I'm going with the Redskins. Or the, oh, oop, I didn't say that. The, 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 yeah, the Washington the, football team. The Nationals. Yeah, yeah the Nationals, whoever. Watch the team in Washington. There you go, in D.C., District of Columbia. All right. How they don't have a mascot by now, I don't know. Uh, Pop is going with Washington, too. So uh, Black is the odd man out on that one. The next game on tap is Minnesota versus Cincinnati. Black, who you got? This is another tough one here, man, because um... – I don't trust Cincinnati yet. I just don't. I think uh, I'm not sure if Burris is playing their quarterback, but I don't trust them yet. Minnesota will find a way to grind this out. I think their defense might be a little better this year than it was last year. They did not look that good in, in the preseason, but they look that bad either. So I think Minnesota gets off to a win here. I'm taking the bikes. All right. Um, I'm hoping that good Kirk Cousins shows up for the first week. And so I have to take the Vikings on this one, even though they're the visiting team against Cincinnati. Cincinnati plays tough. They played tough last year at home. So this should be an uh, interesting game. Ice? 
Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of new uh, new pieces for Cincinnati, though, and Burrow just trying to come back. Uh, you're trying to get adjusted. When they're on, they're going to be dynamic, I think, down the line uh, in the season. But Minnesota has just some basic pieces. Cousins' job is not to just mess this up and give it away. You got Cook that runs the ball real well, and they at times can just do some things to you to win. And I think they will survive the Bengals in Cincinnati. So I'm going with Minnesota. I'm going with, uh, Minnesota. All right, Pop is selecting Minnesota also, so it's Minnesota across the board. The next game on tap is the New York Jets versus Carolina. Black, who you got? I don't trust Carolina, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I thought you would choose Carolina. Yeah, I, I still don't trust them. I, I um, Looking at the Jets, the Jets on energy alone, I'm not going to say it's going to win them a lot of games, but I think Jets feel like it's a new birth there with the coach, the quarterback. These players are talking a little bit, they're a little chippy. They'll have to prove something. For that reason, I'm going to take them week one to beat Carolina. I just don't trust Carolina. That head coach, I think he came in. I think he's trying to do some things. I think he's in over his head. I don't think that talent is there offensively. I'm going to roll with the Jets with this one. Man, I think you took Carolina out there. I'll have one on you. But I'm, I'm liking the Jets uh, quarterback. And I uh, had a chance to watch them during the uh, preseason. And they're starting the former Jets quarterback. And, yeah. Um, yeah, they know who he is. They know him very well. So I, I, I feel sorry for Carolina and that quarterback um, at this particular time. Any, if they had any other quarterback, I would have chose Carolina. But this quarterback, he's an interception machine, and I think he's going to throw at least two or three in this game. I got to go with the J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets on this one. Ice? Where's the game at? Huh? Carolina. 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 Yeah, Charlotte. Uh, he said that's the old Jets quarterback. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm not going to do this, but I'm gonna take a flyer because the Jets killed me. The Jets disappointed me last year. Oh yeah, big I time. But that 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 yeah, oh my god, they just they went down to the last station and they just handed it to him. What are y'all doing? So with that being it's said, Jets game, can I right? go with? Oh my god! Yeah. Oh, it's like dude. All you got to do is walk across the field, take 28 steps, the game's over. Anyway, I'm going to go with the Jets. And, and because I just don't know, Darnold, I don't know. I think if Carolina would just get a ball to McCaffrey and got to get out the way, they could do it. But I just don't know with Darnold starting, with how that's going to go. So I had to take a flyer and uh, roll with the Jets. All right. Pop is the only one going with Carolina. So uh, he's going with the uh, – he's in the home state of Carolina. Uh, can I change it? No, I'm just playing. No, I'm just, playing. I'm just joking. <laughs> you notice I'm not laughing. I'm just going on to the next game. Uh, the next game on tap is Philadelphia at Atlanta. Black, who you got? I think Philadelphia said a lot by, by drafting – not drafting, trade for the quarterback in the final week from Jacksonville. We said some they're not high in the quarterback from our outcome. They don't believe in him, in my opinion. <laughs> And it's an old saying, if you got two quarterbacks, you got none. So Atlanta's still Atlanta. They're going to be able to score the ball a little bit. They're home. <laughs> Not that their defense probably could stop Philly if they had an offense. But uh, I'm taking I'm taking the Falcons with this one. Okay. <laughs> I'm going with, with Philadelphia. A after that Super Bowl debacle, I am not going with Atlanta. They got to prove it to me. Um, you let Dallas come back on you. Let all these teams come back on you. It's like the same. It's like they're in the twilight zone. They can't get out of here. in the fourth quarter. They just freeze up. It's like they're in the same episode of the twilight zone where they can't win a game. So they're going to have to prove it to me. So I'm going with Philly. And I do think that they're, they're going to um, really kind of ride Hurts because he won the starting job. So I think they're going to ride Hurts. Ice? Yeah, Philadelphia, they did some things. They brought in the new coach and coach made some statements that I really don't, I still don't understand to this day. And then you go out and grab Mishu real quick uh, just to make sure that it's going on. So uh, with that being said, like Thor mentioned, Atlanta can score the ball. Uh, Matt Ryan has now changed some brand new weapons. He has really is his number one uh, guy. You had a tight end, a rookie tight end coming in. Um, they still have some other folks that can, uh, was a gauge as well, a wide receiver. So if they had a running back, they might win double-digit uh, games or at least close to 70, be, go above five over, over 500. But they have enough to win this game. So with Atlanta and, and Matt Ryan still can sling the ball, as ugly as it may seem. So I'm going to go Atlanta with this pick. You're going with who? Atlanta. 
Sorry, Atlanta. All right. Uh, Pop is going with Philly too. So it's uh, me and Pop against uh, you and Black on this one. We'll, we'll pay close attention to that game. Next game on tap is Pittsburgh going to Buffalo. Black, who you got? <laughs> this this, this yeah. game here might get out of hand. <laughs> this, yeah. this, might, this might get out of hand, bro, because I think Buffalo, Buffalo's in a mission this year. And I could be wrong. I think Buffalo's in a mission. They're, they're going to be out to kind of hurt some people and show some things. And I think they got their eyes set on Kansas City. And, and the only problem is for them right this week, Pittsburgh's in the way. Not for long. I'm taking the bills with this one. All right. You know, uh, Pittsburgh has a lot to prove. Ben's coming back for one more again. But I can't go with them until they prove that they are mature enough, especially that wide receiver, wide receiver core, um, that they're mature enough and they can handle. I love their running back. I love Najee. And they look like they're, they're going to be good on defense, but they got to prove it to me. And this is a team you have to prove it to me on this week. But I got to go with Buffalo until the Pittsburgh Steelers prove it to me. Ice? Yeah, 11 and 0 last year. Nice yeah, yeah, little yeah. run. I'm not <laughs> a <your> banter. <laughs> but, but, it's, but, it, but it's a brand new year. But I think Buffalo has shown you uh, they're ready to play some real football. And, uh, Pittsburgh is still trying to piece it together. So I'm choosing Buffalo. All right. It is Buffalo across the board. Uh, Pop has picked the home team. Also, the next game is Seattle versus Indianapolis. Black, who you got? Um, yeah. It's, it's funny. Russell Russell is hugging free cow. Go figure. <laughs> Go figure. Go Seahawks. That's what I'm going to say. I'm just going to say that. Go Seahawks! <laughs> yeah, Chicago Bear fans thought Russell was coming here. Psych. Uh, but you got a good quarterback in fields. We'll get to that game in a bit. Uh, I got to go with Seattle, too. I don't care if they're not playing at home. Um, Indianapolis, I don't know where they're going. I don't know where, if Wentz is going to play, how well he's going to play. You just don't know in Indianapolis. Ice? Uh, you don't know who the quarterback is going to be for week one. Uh, they've had some other issues with uh, wide receiver. You don't know. I'm not sure if uh, T.Y. Hilton is playing this week or not. So a lot of questions, even on defense. So you got. I have to go with with the, with the other team. I got. I got to go with that. So we got to roll with Russell Wilson and Seattle. They'll do enough to win. Yeah, and it's Seattle across the board on that one. Next game on tap. Uh, this is just going to be hilarious just to see this coach coach. Um, and on the sideline with all the antics um, he's been, um, you know, presenting us with since he's been hired. It's San Francisco versus Detroit. <laughs> and Garofalo, Black is starting. So who you got? Yeah, I think San Fran's going to play the rookie from time to time. They're going to, you know, kind of change up the pace. Um, it's week one. San Fran is healthy. And that's all you need to know. When they're healthy, they're a pretty good, strong team. And so we'll see what happens week four. I was going to stay healthy, but Detroit, who knows what they're putting on the field, man. I mean, I, 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 this team here, you have a quarterback in Detroit that's lost his confidence totally. He got kicked out of L.A. They don't want him. I don't even think Detroit wants him, but they had no one else to, to go to. Um, like you said, this head coach, who, what organization, what organization will hire this guy as a head coach, man? It, it, they deserve what they get this year <laughs> as a team. And it's going to be on display starting this Sunday because um, – San Fran's gonna put their foot up and I'm take the 49ers. I remember this wrong, but didn't uh Black say last year if Garofalo plays for San Francisco, he's not ever picking the 49ers? <laughs> yeah. Yes. They're yes. playing the Lions, baby. They're playing the Lions. Mm -hmm. I, I, I kind of remember that, but I gotta go with San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, I think you have to pay Garof play Garofalo right now until you get the uh, rookie ready. I think the rookie is very good, but uh, teams who have these great rookies that are coming in, um, give them some time to get acclimated. So I'm going with Sac Sa um, San Francisco. Ice? Yeah, definitely San Francisco. As you said, uh, they have a lot of the weapons still moving forward. Uh, I think Detroit's coach lost a lot of people when he came out and said that they were going to uh, start practicing doing by candlelight. So, yeah, he's been going back there ever since. So, 
San Francisco win. <laughs> San Francisco across the board. Uh, Pop pick San Francisco. This is going to be a good game. Looking forward to this game. Cleveland versus Kansas City. Black, who you got? I'm going to take Kansas City, and I'm only taking them for one reason and one reason only. I watched them in the preseason, and I think Cleveland is coming. I think they're coming. I, I do think it's going to rely on what this head coach decided to do with the quarterback in Cleveland, though, for this season. If he can basically keep the quarterback under wraps and try not to make him out to something that he's not, that they did have a good season. But Kansas City, I think, is going to surprise people this year. I think they're going to run the ball more. They got some run guns, but some younger guns back there as running back. I think they're going to basically look to pound Cleveland and pound other teams. And then basically, when you really start to feel the effects of the run, they're going to turn Mahomes and loose on you. So it's Kansas City with this one. Yeah, if yeah. Cleveland can um, run the ball and pound the ball with their running backs and keep Mahomes off the field, I think Cleveland has a shot of winning. But what I think is going to happen, Kansas City is going to start, you know, and start really fast and score a lot. That's going to put the ball in Baker Mayfield's hand, and that's where you get in trouble. Uh, OBJ is going to be jumping up on the sidelines, all this other stuff, because it's prime time and everybody's watching this game, and that's when they're going to get in trouble. I'm, I think they're going to go away from the run, and then Kansas City is just going to just – just, just beat the Burks off him. I'm um, going with KC. Ice. Yeah, definitely going with KC. Uh, Cleveland has definitely improved, but I think uh, KC has a bad taste in their mouth from losing the Super Bowl, and they want to get back on track. Mahomes is healthy, what we understand, and they need to start off strong. And I'm not sure it might be a little closer than what we think, but I think they want to come out guns blazing to show you that they still are one of the top teams in the AFC. So. Uh, definitely KC, Kansas City. And they definitely built up that offensive line, which I'm very impressed with because a lot of teams kind of let that go because Mahomes is mobile. But Kansas City is like, we got to protect them more. We're beefing up that offensive line. And um, Pop is going with KC too because he loves Mahomes. Denver versus the New York Giants. Black, what you got? I just want the Giants to fire the, the general manager. I don't believe in this head coach. Danny Dimes is only about eight cents, six cents. We'll see this on Sunday. So I, I, I like the fact that Denver decided to go with Bridgewater as their quarterback. That is enough for me right there to pick Denver, man, because I think that offense is not that bad. The defense should probably be solid. I don't know what the Giants are doing, bro. I really don't know. I'm, I'm just hoping that the, the, the running back can make a full season, because if not, he gets hurt again and miss a lot of time, and his career is going to be shortened, bro. He can't keep taking all these injuries. It's just what it is. And the Giants got to realize that he's not your every down back. He's just not. You can't run up in the middle and slide him up in the middle. But they're going to try it anyway because he's the second-round pick. I mean, the second pick of the draft. But I just want to see the Giants have a bad season, bro. I'm just being honest because it's you just not really season. Huh? You want them to have a bad season. Yes, sir. Because I, I, cause they're every, even around here, people I talked around here, well, you know, he deserved one more year. You got to be kidding me. What what makes you he deserve one more year? Danny Don. What? I don't understand that. Why, 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 anyway, with that being said, I'm going to take the Broncos, bro. Let me just take the Broncos. I'm gonna I'm go. I'm gonna go with the Giants. I'm gonna give him a chance. I'm gonna give him. I'm gonna give him a chance. I'm gonna give him a chance. This week, you guys gonna pick Carolina, huh? I like the Giants receivers. Maybe Jones will play. You know, well, maybe the defense will play up to par. So I'm gonna go with the Giants. Uh, Ice. Wow. Yeah, gotta go with Denver. Uh, when you look at it from the standpoint of the Giants, it, you just don't know what's happening over there. They keep trying to figure it out. Uh, they're, they're trying to, as you said, they're going to overuse, you know, Saquon Berkeley. He hasn't played in a while, and, you know, it's probably going to be a little timid. But uh, Denver's defense still kind of runs real, t real, real tight. And Teddy Bridgewater has something he wants to prove. He really does, you know, from that standpoint of doing that. And I think they'll do enough uh, to beat the, beat the Giants. So, uh Definitely going with uh, Denver. All right. Next game on tap is Green Bay versus New Orleans. Black, who you got? Green Bay on this one, man. I think it's going to take a while for um, Jamie Winston to really kind of feel what he needs to feel. Um, he got to bang his head a little bit. Hopefully he learns to basically not try to go for the kill to play every play. But that offense at Green Bay is going to come back and probably click. They still have a running game. Yeah, even though they're traveling to New Orleans, yeah, I think this is going to be a, a game for Green Bay to pick up. Um, it's going to be the Rodgers and Adams show. 
um, all day. Um, I'm not sure about uh, New Orleans uh, secondary, but um, Aaron Rodgers will figure out a way. And uh, he wouldn't be back if he, he was just going to come and just kind of play halfway. He, he is really going to come back and, and with guns blazing. So I got to go with Green Bay also. Ice? Yeah, Aaron Rodgers is on a mission, bro. He already made that announcement, got the money, he started telling Green Bay what he wants for his last year, and we'll see what happens there. But uh, um, New Orleans, when you don't have a Michael Thomas, right, you don't have the weapons, you're going to really be lying on, you know, Kamara to get it done. I think that's going to allow the defense of uh, Green Bay to come up and start to just start to single out who's going to move the ball, and that's going to be enough for them to win the game. So Green Bay. All right. Next game on tap is Miami versus New England. What are they saying up there, Black? Well, I tell you what, New England's been quiet since since Tom Brady left, bro. You don't have a lot of new Patriots fans, man. I, I work with a cat, man, that was a big Patriots fan. He's wearing Tampa Bay stuff now, so that kind of tells you <laughs> how some of the Patriots fans are rolling. I um would have would have Miami has a pretty good defense with Mac Jones starting. I don't even though he might have basically schooled Cam a little bit. They ain't gonna be enough to beat the Dolphins' defense, man. That's not gonna be enough. And uh, this head coach of the Dolphins is pretty shrewd, pretty tough, pretty smart, and uh, he he doesn't mind sticking to the Bill. He will stick it to the Patriots this weekend. I'm taking another Dolphins to win this one. Yeah, uh, the Dolphins always play New England tough, no matter if they're playing at home or away. And uh, I just feel that they're just more subtle than uh, New England. Uh, I don't even know who's playing receiver for New England at this particular time. So I expect Mac Jones to get killed back there trying to find a receiver. So I got to go with Miami Ice. Yeah, they went out. I think they picked up Aguilar. It used to be the wide receiver for uh, the uh, for the Eagles. Patriots did. He's their number one receiver. So Ooh. with that being said, yeah, <laughs> yeah, did he? Miami is tough. They always have been. Um, I think they really want to start to prove, like they said before they were coming, they wanted to start to try to control this division. I think that starts now for them. Uh, so Bill Belichick, you made your choice. We'll see the great Mac Jones coming out against Miami, but I think going to be running for his life. So I'm going to choose Miami. Yeah. And it is, uh, it, it should have been Miami across the board, but Pop is going with New England. He's going with New England. Hey, Pops. Yeah, he's going got one back. It's going to be an interesting week with these picks, man. I ain't laughing, Pop. I'm laughing. I'm not a scared. I'm laughing. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> we can do tricks, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Next game, one tap is Chicago <laughs> versus the LA Rams. Who you got, Black? Well, if the rookie was starting, <laughs> he would have got to my <laughs> But if you're going to roll out, <laughs> you're going to Andy Dalton against Donald, come on, man. Come on. Sorry. I know he's a rookie. At least he has a chance to run and avoid it a little bit. Donald was just <laughs> Donald probably throw in. I mean, not Donald, Dalton. He probably gonna throw at least three picks in this game. At least three picks. One might be the Donald. I'm taking the Rams. I'm taking the Rams. <laughs> Chicago doesn't want Dalton. Everybody's saying this guy is shot. Why is he starting? Put Fields in, and I know how Ice feels about it. Like, no, don't put Fields in yet. You know, you know, especially against this defense with the Rams. But Chicago screaming for Fields. He's on TV all day. They don't even talk about Dalton. I thought Dalton was shot with Dallas. He couldn't get it done in Dallas with all his weapons. He doesn't have the receivers that um, he had in Dallas, and so I, I think it's going to be a Cream City uh, for Donald. <laughs> Fields may play in the second quarter. This, this is going to be really bad. So, I should switch out this game for Sunday night, man. They really <laughs> should. This is switch out this game. They should put Cleveland. I know it's early. They don't usually flex games first game of the week. They should put Cleveland Kansas City on this night, my son. They should flex out right now. Make the decision. They, they, they're going to cream. I, they, they're coming after Chicago. They, they, they're looking at chops for this. I got to go with the Rams. Uh, Ice? Yeah, pretty sad, man. Uh, got to go with the Rams. Uh, this is Stafford's opportunity, right? You always tell about if he had better talent, what he could do. I think he's looking forward to that. And, uh, yeah, I think hopefully Chicago will do feels a favor, man. Don't do that to that young man. The first. Yeah, I don't care how, how, who's calling for him. The mayor could call for him. I don't give a damn. Leave that man on the bench. Do not put him in the lion's den like that, man. That is horrible. You know that. I mean, I know you finally drafted him. He's your quarterback of the future. But at least let us get his feet wet. You tried to kill him in the preseason. We saw that. We saw that, okay? We saw what you did to him in the preseason. He almost died then. So with that being said, 
Leave him and leave him alone. Let him at least heal from that hit. And uh, with that being said, I'm gonna go with the Rams. Give it three games. Three games. I give it three games, bro. Uh, I told you that a few nights ago when uh, I showed you a commercial uh, uh, on the news what they showed about him. Last game on tap is Baltimore versus Las Vegas. Who you got, Black? Um, the Ravens. The Ravens are gonna probably run this game. They're gonna probably pass it a little bit. It's funny. I, they were trying to get receivers, and nobody wanted to come play with um, the quarterback. I don't understand that. No one wanted, wanted to come play with him. I, I, I just don't get that. I mean, I, I don't understand it. I Even Julio, in a sense, didn't want to come there. You wanted to go play with Tannehill? Ooh. I'm not knocking Tannehill, but, I mean, if I'm, I'm Julio, I'm going to play in Baltimore, bro. Why would you want to go play with – I don't get it. But I, with that reason being said, I'm, I'm going to take uh, the Ravens. They're running enough to get this done. Yeah, they were one of the top offensive teams in the league in the last yeah. few years. So I, I don't understand that either. And if they get Lavia, you said they, they signed Le'Veon Bell? To the practice squad, though. Okay. They're not playing to the practice squad. Okay. That could be an interesting tool to have if he works out. If he gets his head straight, that could be an interesting tool. Le'Veon Bell is not the Le'Veon Bell five years ago. Bro. Yeah, that's true. But if he can get himself together, that, that would be interesting. So I got to go with Baltimore. Ice? Yeah, I'm going to go with Baltimore simply because I think they had the better weapons, right, with that standpoint. But let's be real. You guys talked about why wide receivers and I didn't go to Baltimore. We knew what was going on. They still got the hangover from the, the uh, coach that's over in Houston right now. Yeah, they still got the hangover. When the standpoint of they were doing a lot of pass, I mean, they were moving the ball, but they simply were not throwing the ball enough to the quality receivers. So it was all about Marquise, Marquise Brown, Hollywood, and then also the tight end. So I don't know, but I think they have enough to win this game. I think they're going to do it in easy fashion, and uh, that's how it kind of rolls out. Okay, those are our picks. We will post them up on social media, and um, good luck to all of you. Yeah, yeah, good luck. <laughs> all right, Ice, we've been away for a couple of months, and um, what you got on boxing? One of the things that disappointed me, a lot of things disappointed me about boxing um, in the last two months that we have been away, but Pacquiao didn't get to fight Earl Spence. I was looking forward to that, but uh, Pacquiao got beat. And a lot of people saying that it's not the same Pacquiao, and he, uh, he may think about retiring. And then you have the YouTubers who are kind of dominating exhibition boxing I won't call it boxing but ex exhibition boxing and people are still wanting more of this so give me your recap on boxing since we've been gone yeah uh, we'll start with with uh, Pacquiao uh, we think we knew too he's 42 years old that there was a chance that he could not uh, be able to get things done from that standpoint and his opponent really was just kind of telling you he was he was larger he was taller uh, he had a nice little jab and he did just enough to keep Pacquiao at bay. And mm -hmm. at times, Pacquiao was not the same fighter. I mean, it's one of those things where he was moving around. And you said yourself, he couldn't get out the way of the punches, mm -hmm. right? And as much as he tried to be uh, a force like he has been in the past, he simply couldn't do it. His wife was cringing every time he got hit because he was he would used to be a he would disappear like Mayweather used to do at times. But this time he lay, he lingered, which allowed him to get hit. And his uh opponent knew exactly what was going on. So he waited on him and he was able to, to tough it out. I hope Pacquiao walks away. He had been a hell of a fighter. And, you know, he did what he did against Pete, Keith Thurman before was a miraculous, but to try to do it again, sooner or later, it's gonna, he, ran, he was gonna run out of gas. And that's what happened in this fight, that his last fight. So I hope he walks away and lives his life. Um, you mentioned about the YouTubers. So, uh, you know, about Paul coming out and the way he was able to handle his business and, and win a fight against the uh, the YouTuber. Now, though, it's, it, it almost seems as if he took a lot of punches, right? Paul did. And now, as much as he was telling how great he was, he started saying, I've only been boxing uh, 18 months and my teeth are not right. I might need to take a break. All these excuses when you're running your mouth. And the money is the money. He marketed it well. He got his money. I'm not mad about it. But you might be seeing this come to an end because sooner or later now, you keep moving, you move, stepping up and moving your game up against more talented fighters, and you're going to take an L. And, you know, you're going to stop making excuses. I'm not mad at you. I may not 
like exactly what you do. I still think it's more entertainment, as I said, celebrity boxing. But that's okay. You making money. You selling out arenas in Cleveland. Hey, who's gonna be mad at you? But sooner or later, somebody's gonna uh gonna come after you, right? They're gonna come after you, and they're gonna they're gonna uh, challenge you, and you're gonna have to prove yourself. And if you're not ready, you might quit while you're ahead. You know, there's a couple. They wanted, you know, of course, they want a rematch. But at the standpoint, I heard one interesting name. Not really. Yes, yes, Masvidal came out. Ore Masvidal, the great UFC fighter, came out and said, "I would knock both and his brother, he and his brother out." And and if you know Masvidal, he has punching power. And as a boxer, he you know he he doesn't just uh, try to hit you; he can hurt you. And he's talking about talking to Dan, uh, Dana White to possibly bringing you know, bringing it all together, which means more money, and maybe Paul will take another payday, but you, certain people you don't want to mess with, and I don't think you really want to see Masvidal, because Masvidal can punch. When I heard that, I'm like, is he just chasing the money at this particular point, because it seems like, you know, you know, the last fighter, who was a UFC fighter, um, and he was on this kind of down, he's on the downslide of his career, right. it, you know, got a great Willie, payday, yeah, Willie. and the fight wasn't, to me, I saw, I saw it, it wasn't that great, it wasn't really a fight, it was like a, you know, I'm going to throw a few punches and hold you and hold you up for a little bit. Um, and they're talking about doing it again. And I'm like, I wouldn't watch this again. I, I didn't want to watch it the first time. But my, my boy Easy Ed made me watch it. And I watched it. And um, I, I'm not doing it again. But it just seemed like he just, he sees the payday. And a lot of UFC fighters don't make a lot of money. So yeah, it's almost like he, UFC fighters get big time paydays. I mean, become millionaires overnight with these exhibitions. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. And, you know, and what Tyrone, Tyrone Woodley was the type of guy that we thought at times he could be a striker, but his last four fights, he really didn't show you a lot. But he showed you a lot of heart. And once he started to get the groove of being a boxer, then he was able to come after Paul. And uh, he won some, he really hurt Paul at one time. But Paul won fair and square. But with Masvidal, Masvidal throws, he's not really the kicking type. He throws his hand. I watched him fight Nate Diaz. And Nate Diaz is a monster. Nate Diaz stood up to everything that he had when he was throwing hands. And if he can connect as a boxer on Paul and hitting him flush, yeah, that might be a problem. So he might be chasing the money, but uh, it was, along with the money, he's going to be throwing them hands. <laughs> not gonna, that's one thing Willie was kind of lacking. He wanted him to throw more punches. You're not going to have to worry about, about miles with all. He might be unorthodox, but he will be landing. And that, I'm not sure, you know, Paul and his brother are trying to uh, Poo poo it off like, oh, you really don't want us. You know, they want to go after the big fight with McGregor. They trying to get the real money. And I think they're doing it because of the fact that, that they know that their time might be up soon. So you got to get a major payday. If you're going to get knocked out, you might as well get paid for it. So, of course, you're going to call out Conor McGregor. But Conor McGregor is like, dude, are you serious? Mm -hmm. You know, you trying to you come in. As much as you say you're great, you are. The people know my name. So he might have to take that Masvidal fight. And, and just kind of walk away and count his pennies. But uh, sooner or later, though, you can't hide anymore. You gotta, you've got been running your mouth, talking to stuff. You have to prove to people that you're worthy of it because you can't take you seriously. That's why I still say it's celebrity boxing, a.k.a. entertainment. Because you get in with a real boxer, come on, man. Now, will we ever see Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder fight? That's the magic question. A lot of people were saying it because it got postponed. And then, of course, we'll be coming up here in a couple of weeks in October, right? But uh, we have not had a lot, a lot of promotion out of it. I think sometimes right now, no news is good news. And I think it's a different way they may be promoting it. We've heard about, uh, you know, about the Wilder being on the beach and fighting like that. We've seen fights one and two, correct? Mm -hmm. So now we're going to three. What else do you really need to say? You know what's happening. So maybe they're waiting and they're going to all of a sudden just go boom, boom, boom. Because we know... As much as we talk about the way they're teasing us, and we don't know if it's going to happen, the uncertainty of it. The one thing that they do know from a boxing standpoint, people want to see the fight. They want to see it. And you can complain and complain and, and cry and moan. But if they say, all right, we next Friday, here we go. <laughs> you're going to tune in. You're going to be cussing them out. But then you're going to tune in. And maybe that's what they're going to do. No news is good news. And to make sure that it's right, so you're going to tell me in a week or two if it comes on and they mention what they do, you're not going to tune in. You'll be cussing, but you're going to drop your 79 dollars 
Because you're going to see them. <laughs> so I think we will see it. We, we, we even, uh, I, I read something where Tyson Fury is talking about Joshua again. And is he yeah. doing that to, to kind of um, ruffle the feathers of Deontay Wilder? Clearly, because Deontay Wilder, this is, this is a major fight for him. You know, he was exposed a lot of times. A lot of people have been saying he was uh, a not true champion anyway because of the way that he fought. He just a knockout artist. Didn't think he could box. So now this is an opportunity. Got rid of Mark Breland. Mark Breland, everybody, it was everybody's fault but his own. So you went out and got some, a new trainer, a guy that you already beat, but you right. say he's a good trainer, and you say you're ready. So this is an opportunity. He's going to take it very seriously. But we have to think about Tyson Fury is very crafty. He learns how to fight. And, he, and maybe I said before that I thought it was they were coming back too early for, uh, you know, for, for Wilder to fight because he needed more time. But secretly, I deep, that think deep down inside uh, that Wilder has been training for a lot longer than what we know. So he's not like he's just been sitting on the sideline. We think he's just chilling. He actually been fighting because he wants this really bad. But the thing about Fury, I'm not sure Fury was ready. So I ain't saying he just made up the COVID thing. But anyway, it's ironic that all of a sudden it comes this way and he's not in shape. But uh, Fury is a, is a tough hombre, bro. I think it's going to be a hell of a fight. And the build up because it's number three now. So now who learned from what? Which is why I still think it's a fight everybody wants to see. And of course, uh, sure he's going to throw the wild, not the wild thing out, but throw out the Joshua thing just to piss him off. Like, you really overlooking me, aren't you? You are. And so you, any way you can get in his head, hopefully he's probably, uh, Wilder, Fury's probably thinking that Wilder's going to put that costume on again. <laughs> <laughs> Anything frustrating and confusing. He needs an edge. <laughs> Fury needs an edge. If I was uh, Tyson Fury, I'd put the costume on the next fight and walk down. The <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, if he does that, believe me, it'll be made out of paper shape. <laughs> <laughs> Any other boxing news that we need to kind of look for in the uh, coming weeks? Yeah, we have some other things coming up. Uh, like you said, uh, uh, Shakira Stevenson is going to be fighting coming up pretty soon. My is AKA my son, as some people know him to be. But uh, looking for that. Uh, some other fights down. Uh, Canelo might be fighting again in uh, November uh, with Caleb Plant. Uh, so that should be coming up too. We have some other good. Uh, Middleweight and then uh, some welterweight uh, bouts that may be coming up too. So stay tuned. Enjoy your entertainment. Enjoy celebrity boxing. And, and I'll say this we have a basketball player who's supposed to come back, but he got in shape and he got COVID, so he can't fight. So this is how they do it. They come back, and Twiller is trying to become the new celebrity boxing channel, and that's fine. So do they not? They drop only do they drop Oscar. But they bring in Evander Holyfield. Are they really playing with your intelligence? Think about that. They're playing with your intelligence. He's always ready to fight. He's going to be 90. He's going to be ready to fight. So they, they, they sub make the substitution. They move forward. And they're going to sell that to you. They're going to sell it to you. And you're going to accept it. But that's real boxing. Hey, I ain't mad at you. You want to be entertained with a, with, a, with, a, with a weed company behind it? Rock on. But uh, I don't know about you. But I, I, you can't get me like that. You cannot take out Oscar De La Hoya and then you're going to put in Evan the Holyfield and we act like nothing ever happened. Come on, man. Anyway, but that's just my opinion. I'm just wondering. I can't, I can't, I can't do it anymore. I can't, I can't watch the celebrities. Uh, wait, it, wait, it was fun. Wait a minute. You, what, what? It was fun with Snoop Dogg and, and Nate Robinson, which I heard he's trying to make a comeback. <laughs> it was fun with that. But I, I, you know, like I said, if I, if I, if, if Eddie hadn't been texting me and texting me and kind of giving me updates, I wouldn't have tuned into the last one. And I thought it was a waste of time. I thought it was a, a real waste of time. So um, I, I just check out the UFC and watch those fights and I'm cool. So yeah, we'll see how it plays out, but hopefully we'll get some better real boxing matches coming up before the end of the year. But if not, Triller would also definitely love to provide you with other entertainment from celebrity boxing. That's what we have. Celebrity boxing matches and uh, that pure source of entertainment. Not mad at him because you can sell it. Hey, rock on. Who am I to get in your way of making money? But they, I mean, I had to watch it. They just need to bring back the show Grudge Match. That's all. They just need to bring that show back. I remember 
Uh, look it up on YouTube. It was just a funny show with oversized gloves and folks who had grudges against each other and just uh, fought like three, uh, maybe one or two minute rounds, and then it was over. But they just need to bring that back as a show. And all these celebrities who want to fight somebody, you know, you can have 50 Cent fight whoever, and you know, all these fights, and they, they just go at it that, that way, three rounds, and that just be it. Every week, there's another, another. I mean, they want to make money for it. But I hear that people are paying for the pay-per-view. They're getting a lot of money for it. So, hey. Hey, can't make it came back to us. No, so. really can't. I was watching, um, there was a guy who played at UConn, um, Butler. Um, Karan Butler? No, not Karan Butler. When he yeah. signed with the Lakers, he was doing an interview way back. He was signed with the Lakers, and they were interviewing him recently. And they said, um, <clears throat> I think when they signed him for the Lakers, Kobe was signing his contract for like $136 million or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And after Kobe signed his contract, he looked over to him. He said, you ready to black out? And Karan Butler was like, well, what the hell are you talking about? He said, meet me here at the gym at 7.30 in the morning, and we're going to black mm -hmm. out. And he said, man... They shot like, like I don't know, it's like hundreds of jumpers from one spot, hundred jumpers from another spot, layups, all kind of stuff. That was the first workout. He said, and the reason why they call it blackout, he said, you worked out until he said you were seeing stars. You were ready to black out. You ready to black oh out. my god! Wow. He said, then you had a couple of hours to go eat, maybe go rest. Then you come back and do it. And you black out again. He's like they did that three times a day. Wow. Three times a day. He said, you ready to black out? And he said that uh, now means to black out. I'm like, dang. 